So I want to be honest, upfront with the people, and not pandered to special interest groups and friends. Welcome to Timelines and Meet the Voter, episode 287. On this episode, we have Eddie Lorton, candidate for mayor for the city of Reno, Nevada. Pleased to be here today on this beautiful spring day. Thanks for having me, Bill. Well, we pulled Eddie away from putting up signs, working with volunteers, and he's running for mayor of the city of Reno. But before we talk about your campaign, we're going to talk about you. Okay. Sounds so, good to me. So you're born someplace other than Reno, but you were here pretty young. So, well, I was born in Dayton, Ohio, and we moved out here when I was six months old. So pretty much born here, kind of. And <laughs> I've been here for 56 years. I'm 56 and a half now. You know how when you're young, that half means something. So I've been a 56-year resident in this beautiful city. I know the issues and what to do. So I love Reno. So where'd you go to high school? Reed High. Oh, Reed. You went to yeah. Reed. Okay. Yeah, we so did. So what did your family do here? Well, my dad, he was a general manager of Continental Imports. It was a car dealership on Kitsky Lane at the time. And my mother, she was at the Nugget for years and years. So they ended up growing up here and doing a lot. And then later on, my dad had the first buy here, pay here car lots, which was Lorton Auto Sales. So that's how I grew up. So right out of school, I know you started working pretty young in life. What was your first job? Well, actually, my very first job was I worked at John Esquaga's Nugget is a dishwasher. Okay. That's cool. Like 14 and a half, 15 years old at the time. Yeah. And, but it was funny because the first day I got promoted. So that's a way to start it off. I was washing dishes at the nugget and all of a sudden they asked me, I'm a young man. I was in football, baseball, basketball, track. I did all sports. And they asked me if I would like to uh, be one of the cooks on the prime rib room. So I said, certainly. So all you do is pack it in rock salt and put her on the rotisserie, stuff like that. But one of the fringe benefits was we could eat all the uh, prime rib we wanted. So you were everyone's best friend. So it was good when you were was young. Was that man. mostly in the summer? Uh, yes, because then I had football. So I never really had any breaks. That's how at a young age I learned how to work hard and smart because when everybody else was off enjoying summer vacation, I would work hard so I could get money to buy a car. I always had to earn my own way. So I worked during the summer and then until football two a day started and then my yeah. dad would pay my insurance and gas and then I could play football. So the first two months a year in the summertime when everyone else had a vacation, I was working. And then the third month was football. Two early learning lessons, I can say. First of all, working, which is great. And I don't mm -hmm. think kids can under 16 can do what you do anymore. The laws are so restrictive in liability. Yeah. But the second thing is football, both character builders. Yes. Well, that's why I love sports and athletics because it... It teaches you discipline, perseverance, the things you need to learn in life. And it's fine if people don't play, but I thought it was a good character builder for me because it teaches you how to get in there and be dedicated to something. And it's a good camaraderie between people. So I really enjoy athletics. So what position do you play? Actually running back. Oh, good. Good stuff. Yeah. I like running and back. And then I was the end guy, the fly guy. Whenever at a young age, I ended up like at 18 years old when I was going to read at 18, I set the bench record there, and it was 320 at the time. And then I also wow. ran standing up in cleats on the football field, ran a 4440. So I was really fast and quick. So I was the end guy that we'd go down after the kickoff, and you'd be the first one to get to him. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed did similar that. stuff. I'm a little smaller, but uh, very, very similar positions. Love football. Yep. Great sport. What a character builder. And uh, it's a great thing to do. What made you go into football? Well, I just liked it as a young age at eight years old. I was playing Pop Warner, so my dad played football yeah, usually too. Usually a family member has some influence on that and makes you love the game. You yes. still watch football? Uh, yes, I do. It depends if I'm not out going camping or boating or doing yeah. all the things our beautiful area has to offer, then I'll sit there. I'm not much of a couch potato. So yes, I watch the Super Bowl for yeah. sure. But in between, I'd rather play than watch. I. Love it. I, I totally understand. That's good. Yeah. So going on out of school, your first job, what was, well, not, not your first job, but was, what was your profession? What did you get into? How did you make your money? Well, actually, when I was 20 some years old, I started ET carpet cleaning. I used to work and do a few different things. And then all of a sudden I thought I'd start my own business because then you get paid for your discipline and dedication. So I started my own business and that was ET carpet cleaning. We've been going uh, for 32 years now. So still going strong because then through life, I ended up starting my carpet cleaning business. Later on, I started doing some day trading because I'm a pattern spotter business analyst, so I could learn things. And so then 
all of a sudden, I, I really put it out there. When I was a young man, I took a home equity credit line on my house of 80 grand. No one ever showed me how to trade. So you put it out there. You know, when you're younger, you take those risks that need be taken to get where you want to be. So I started doing some day trading, was quite successful. And then with that money, started buying real estate because you got to be diversified in the business world. You got short and long term investments. So then after that, I started buying up real estate. I own stuff in Oregon, Gray Eagle, California, and stuff here in Reno. And I love warehousing, stuff like that. So then later on, I started doing concerts and tours. So I'm quite diverse and gone to auctions and what my background is. But it made me successful today. And that's why I have a lot to offer as far as being the mayor. And people have listened from outside Reno area. Gray Eagle is in California. It's north of uh, Highway 80 in Tahoe. And it's really secret up there. The Feather River, it's a great little river to fish and gorgeous area. Yeah, it's great a be- value. beautiful little town. And two people go there. They have a... Fourth of July parade there is a really neat place. They have bicycle parades and everything. And then they have like movie night where they have a big park where they lay out on the lawn and they have a big screen and then they project movies and you can hang out with your family. So it's really family oriented. It's a lot of recreational outdoor activities. Great place to have a cabin or second house. A lot of people live there full time too. Yes. Well, I also love my place in Oregon too. I have a place in Winchester Bay, Oregon. It's one of the nice vacation rentals down there and it's right in the marina. They have two red crystal lighthouses in the world, and one of them's there. So at night, you can go up to the red crystal lighthouse, watch it go, and there's whale watching and fishing, and you can ride the dunes on the ocean. So it's a really special place. Now, I do notice with your business, you use your phone a lot, and you you do all the scheduling still yourself. Yes, I do, because I'll tell you something in life, what people need to remember and not forget, appreciate the work, who does it, and respect hard work. So no matter what I ever do, I own a lot of real estate now. I got paid for it 40 years old, but you know what? Don't forget who does the work and respect it. So there's a time even when I'm mayor, who knows, if we get a flood some night, I might be right out there with them doing an extraction because that's nobody's too good to work and don't forget that. So uh, driving on, just thinking about what did you do before cell phones? Oh God, well, I was one of those that was hard to convert. I'll put it that (laughs) way. I've always, sometimes I get a little stubborn and when I was younger, I was more stubborn than I am now. You learn through experience. Well, that's hard to believe. Well, yeah. But I've seen you mellow out a lot, though. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's just part of growing up and learning and, and becoming a leader. So when I was a young man, I just wouldn't do the cell phone thing. It was just a way to be cool at first, right? So I just, nah. And so I would just run my business from my answering machine. So then you'd call in remotely from the corded phone. Yeah. You'd get your messages and stuff like that, put your code in. And so I ran it from the answering machine for a long time because when I started my business, there were no cell phones originally. So you had your answering machine. So I waited and waited. Then we had the bag phone for a while. So finally, <laughs> so I'm dating myself here. So we had the bag oh, phone. Oh, yeah, the big phone. Yeah. Then one day I ended up, you got to convert and speed up to the speed of business. So then later on, got my flip phone and the rest his history and yeah you're, you're still <laughs> the flip phone. well anyway eddie it's uh, interesting to see how technology has evolved in all our businesses how it's affected your business how has it affected your business because you're basically use what you're doing something i totally believe in mm-hmm. i'm a i was a general when i was younger um and did everything but i saw my subs and some of the people i helped set up in business do extraordinarily well focusing on one trade one specialty yeah and yours is was cleaning carpets or it still is well, yeah, but my main thing now is my real estate and stuff. But when You're I was younger, though, but yeah, because what I did, I you know, through time you work smart too. At first, you work hard. Right. I was working twenty-hour work days for a long time. I had six businesses going. I earned what I got, and the the amazing part is, I made it through alive. <laughs> so I used to yeah. work hard, and then you get working smart. So later on in life, I kind of downsized my carpet cleaning to where we were doing a lot of big places in town, the Cal Neva, Fitzgerald's Club. Um, um, the Biltmore at Tahoe, Crystal wow, Bay Club. those are good contracts. Well, so finally I ended up wanting to downsize because I just didn't want to do nighttime jobs anymore. But now we still, if it's an apartment complex we're doing, and they have floods, and we'll go there like a few years ago, we had one of our accounts, and they had flooding on Christmas Eve and Christmas night. I was right there with my guys because they had the third, the second, in the first floor, about 10 across, they were all flooding onto these people's Christmas presents. So 
I got right in there with my workers. I wouldn't expect them to do anything I wouldn't do. They were out working, so I joined right in with them, and we got these things cleaned up and tried to salvage these people's Christmas. That's good. So, But yeah. then through time, I downsized my carpet cleaning. Um, real estate's my main thing now. And, of course, running for mayor so I can help our city. We've gone through a lot in the last four years, and we need a strong leader to be able to move forward. I've interviewed a lot of different people, and probably the number one way they make their large sums of money for passive has been real estate. It still work. Mm -hmm. I, uh, one person actually used to sell lunches to uh, field workers, and he did that consistently for many years. Yep. Bought some property and continued mm -hmm. to buy property, but continued to serve those lunches for the workers. But I'm still an entrepreneur to where, you know, I know a good investment. And when they come along now, I have the money to go out and do that. A lot of things in life, a lot of people have opportunities. But for one, it's recognizing an opportunity. And for two, seizing the moment. Well, stepping back, 2007 and eight must have been hard times for you. And nine, I would think. Well, with me, I always got through it pretty good. The... The economy didn't hit me that hard because I bought my buildings right and stuff like that. And so when everything was in a downturn, I already had my buildings. I stuck to, because I'm an honorable person to where you stick to what you sign up for. So I kept making my mortgage payments. Everything went down. And then now that it's gone up, now they want to do things like rent control and the different things, which is tough because when my investments went down, no one wrote me a subsidy check. You know, it's funny, especially in California, I say this. California has broken between the rich and the poor and the middle class has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we own some property there, and they're tr they'll attack property owners left and right well, and give the benefit to those who haven't built. We have a special thing right now. We have a thing going on right now, and it's a bill that they're trying to pass to get rid of your 3% taps cap. That's a disaster right. it would be. for it our economy and people, because I'll get into that for a minute if you don't mind. Go ahead. And that is the fact that if they get rid of this 3% tax cap, they make it seem little and innocent by, oh, we're just getting rid of the 3% tax cap. They implemented this originally in 07 or 08, the tax cap, and that was to help the government. So then they self-inflated property values so that the bottom wouldn't fall out. And it helped the government so it could only go down 3% a year. It was helping the government, not the citizens. But now that it's helping the citizens and it's on the way up, right. it can only go up 3% a year. So now all of a sudden they want to get rid of it because it's actually helping the citizens. So say, if, for instance, somebody built a house in the 30s. These people have paid into the infrastructure for all these years and built right. the infrastructure. So then all of a sudden, when they proposed this bill, they cherry picked it and didn't tell you the facts. So now all of a sudden that now they want to put a development in right next door to these old houses and they reap the rewards of all the infrastructure that these houses paid for. And then they want you to pay the same in taxes when your older houses are more for maintenance, things like this. I want to go into more detail at the second half towards the end of the campaign. I do want to ask you about Reno. I love Reno, first of all, and I love that we don't pay state income tax. It's a good thing. Yes. Well, and, why and, do you think people move here? It's because of our tax structure. So let's ruin it and then drive everybody out of here what, is what though? they're doing. The real reason to move here is because of these beautiful mountains, the hills, the streams, the creeks, the people. Honestly. And I the tax structure. <laughs> and the, ta oh, the tax structure. <laughs> I still love the mountains. I, I go, love them I go over to California and you know, actually work on the slopes. In so. Tahoe and in Pyramid. Tahoe we and have world-class fishing it. Oh, at yeah. Pyramid. Truckee River right downtown is a great trout river. People just well, don't realize. No one's fishing right now. It's a great time to fish. I have a stepson that caught a 10-pound German brown out of the Truckee River, so. It's great. I, I mean, love this place. Just a few steps away from here, down that way. Yes. I mean, it's good fishing right now, and no one's fishing. They'll start fishing around the holiday as soon as summer gets here. But, but the thing is, too, that we have to be careful of. Okay, we're on an economic upswing right now. Right. Things are going well, so and we need the right person in place so we can take advantage of our upswing right. instead of shut the window. But there's another thing. A lot of people are moving here from California, which is fine, but don't drag everything from there of why you moved here, and we're becoming California more and more, and that's terrible for our city. You know, I disagree a little bit with that, yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the people from California are escaping California a lot. I mean, I there's a lot of parts in California who yes. do not agree. I mean, they're having a war right now in California between cultures. Well, I, that's what I was specific on, the fact that you're welcome here, but don't drag that stuff with yeah, you because yeah. someone has to come from somewhere, and just so they leave that stuff yeah. there, it's it's good with me. You have to come yeah. from somewhere, and you're welcome here. But yet, by the same token, don't drag all those laws and all these things they do there here, and you got a good deal on a house compared to down <laughs> yeah. there, and you want to drag it well, all Well, a house has gone to, you know, five years ago is the time to buy a house here. And well, Hey, let's just drive on. I want to um, take a quick break. 
And we'll thank our sponsors, the silver sponsors and others. And then we're going to come back with your life and success principles. And then we'll talk about your campaign. We got sidetracked a little bit. No problem. Thank you, sir. All right, Eddie. All right. Let's just do this. This is Bill. And I want to thank the silver sponsors for their financial support for the videos as well as our podcasts. The first person to support us, a silver sponsor, was Ed and Georgette Strom. Then Ray and Carolyn Rocha. Other sponsors are the U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation and Gary Duarte. My wife, Karen, is a real estate broker here in Reno, Nevada. Tom Heck for U.S. Senate. Sharon Angle for U.S. Congress. Eugene Hoover for Lieutenant Governor. Brett Jones for Lieutenant Governor. Craig Muller for Attorney General. Wes Duncan for Attorney General. Derek Urar for State Treasurer. Gary Smith, Candidate 16 Senate District. Kim Meyer for Sheriff here in Washoe County. Sherman Box for Sheriff again in Washoe County. Andrew Caldwell for Washoe County School Board Trustee. Aji Shiraji for Mayor of Reno. Eddie Lorton for Mayor of Reno. And finally, without their support, we couldn't do things like this. We have literally had this month 20,000 views, and that's because of our marketing and support of the uh, Silver Sponsors. And as you can see, um, overall, we've had 124,000 views for the life of it, 736,000 impressions. Impressions is what you see on the side. You'll find these on uh, websites as well as YouTube and Google. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the second half of this interview. Yeah, I do. Okay. Hey, Eddie, welcome back. We're going to talk about your life and success principles. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> People, I, I'll talk, maybe we'll talk later what I just said. So. Got to have a sense of humor. Pretty funny. Life is short. Enjoy every moment. So you have three, honesty, integrity, and work hard and smart. Work hard and smart is one. So tell me about what does honesty mean to you? Honesty means that you never lie to gain a vote. I'm running for mayor. Yeah. So I will not lie to gain a vote, and I will be truthful. I believe in transparency. Honesty comes in so many forms. So I believe in being transparent. You don't do caucus meetings before the meeting and then argue it out when you're not in front of the public. There's so many things this council does. So first off, honesty means everything and transparency as so well. So I want to be honest up front with the people and not pander to special interest groups and friends because this is how government works. Yeah. If you're a career politician, if you don't like the rules, you change it for your and your friend's benefit. I'm tired of that. I've known Eddie for a few years, and this is his second run, and I totally believe what you said. I think Eddie is Eddie. You're getting what you get. That's right. I won't lie to gain a vote. I'll do a great job. I'm super qualified for this job. We've seen what's happened yeah. here. If I'm given a chance for the goodwill of the people and earn their vote, I'll do a great job. I'll be here as long as they'll have me. Okay. So next principle is integrity. That goes with honesty. So what's integrity mean? Well, integrity means that you have to be honest, upfront, and honorable when you make your decisions. And you also have to consider other people's feelings. Okay, you can't be cruel and mean, have integrity. You have to be kind to people, but yet to stick to what you think is best for the majority of the people. And not just the, hey, it's fine if you can do things for the minority of the people too. I mean, you can't, always make the special interest groups happy. In other words, you have to be here working for the public. I want to bring the public back in public service is what I want to do. Very good. And then finally, work hard. So Eddie, next one is work hard and smart. What's that mean to you? Well, it's self-explanatory and that is you have to earn your keep. So here we have two council meetings a month. I'm going to be there more than that. I'll be there five days a week because our city, the only issues they're supposed to be worried about is police, fire, and public works. That's the city's job. Our uh, city can't even identify a problem, let alone fixing it. People don't know their jobs down there. So I'm a, I've ran large and small businesses both. So I know how to identify the issues and fix them. And don't bring me a problem unless you have two solutions. That's what I've learned in business. So I'll be there working hard every day, and you have to work smart. I know the system's inside and out. What originally got me involved in politics is when I was 20-some years old buying real estate. I buy an improvement district, they appreciate the most, and then you seize the most money out of your investment. So therefore, I ended up buying some properties on 4th Street. It was an improvement district. This city had promised us from the council that they would build no homeless shelters, and 
They wouldn't build any strip clubs on 4th Street. So I bought into it and I purchased some real estate and then they lied and put the homeless shelter in the middle of the downtown core. And then I found myself having to go to council meetings to protect my investments. Now, 30 some years later, what turned into me protecting my investments is a way to help 400,000 people. So now I work hard and smart. I'm there all the time I'm needed. Plus, you have to work smart. And that's how you protect things and do what's right for the community. So now I can help 400,000 people. Very good. So now we're going to actually talk in more detail about your campaign. Okay. And we've got about three or four minutes. So the first thing is, why run for mayor? Why run for mayor? Our city is at a turning point right now. We need a lot of help. Like I said earlier, we're turning into California and the bad parts of it instead of the good. So I want to be the, let's see, the protector of citizens' funds. So here we are right off the bat. This city of Reno, I wrote this city, a property disposal program with policies. It'll cost them $100,000 to do. I voluntarily did it. They couldn't do it in two years. I did it in two days. And guess what? We'll talk about the incompetence at City Hall. I ended up finding 150 more pieces than the city even knew they owned. They were the expensive ones in the redevelopment agency that were industrial and commercial. So my plan is this, and my campaign is to sell off All surplus properties, first off, you repurpose. So if we're going to build a new police station, which we're in dire need of, or a fire station, you keep the land to build on so we don't have to come out of pocket for that land. And then secondly, if another government agency would like to pay full appraised value, you sell off to them. And thirdly, then it goes to public bid. Now we're in an upswing. What a better time to sell off surplus properties. This city isn't supposed to be in the real estate business. Police, fire, and public works. That's our only job. Yeah. They've, they've gotten lost through time, through the redevelopment agency, even California quit using it because it was so abused. In the past, what they do, they buy all this land and they give it to their friends and buddies. Like here recently, the city council wants to put their land in a land trust because then they can give it away to their friends for little or no cost at all. And then it doesn't go before a public hearing where I chastise them at these meetings because here we're 480 million in debt and they're giving our real estate away. Lately, they gave away six and a half acres of riverfront property to this generator group that's like Burning Man art and stuff like that. And we're in debt. So my plan is to sell all this land off and, and it will accomplish a few different things. So we sell off the land. It's hundreds of millions of dollars worth. Then we pay our debt off in full, which will get rid of principal and interest on $480 million. Plus, we don't have the bond debts, things like this, servicing fees, and the high interest rates. Imagine the money that will come into the city. Plus, secondly, it'll be a blight initiative program through all these pieces of property laying around that are messed up are going to get developed so it'll make it nicer in the area so a blight initiative cleanup program will also occur and then plus it'll dilute the housing market so we'll do infill development which is the cheapest form of development we already have the infrastructure in place which is sewer police fire instead of these things like stonegate that was turned down through the planning department and then the council members because of who was the lobbyist for this development approved one and we have flooding in north of town and they don't even have roads and infrastructure or police or fire so it's things like this that i see that are problems so then we can do the infill development which will create more housing which brings housing costs down and then last but not least it'll also put these properties on the tax scrolls because when the city owns these properties they're not paying taxes on these properties the money will be rolling in and then they're worried about things like getting rid of this tax cap i talked about earlier well this will solve the problem it's creative financing is that you do in business and that's what i'm doing we'll cure all these things with one move so let's see i'm trying to keep up with that so I think I totally understand that. Not sure. Well, maybe I don't totally understand everything. Well, ask but me what you don't with understand. That said, uh, the average voter is it gonna, they, are they going to understand what you just said? Well, uh, I will be doing very pointed advertising, and we'll be doing commercials, radio. You get it all out there. And those that have viewed this thing, I'll get into as much detail as people want to. You know, I can get into detail yes. because I know what I'm doing. So we need. It's complicated sometimes. But someone needs to be because this council isn't being so I will be the guy that will get complicated. So so the bottom line, I think I understand what you're saying. The bottom line is you're going to make government smaller, more efficient in supporting the people. You're going to have less burden. You're going to return the property back to the people so they can create wealth and tax in the free market. 
Well, so their idea is like for the people. You know what their answer Instead is? Of the government doing it. To get rid of your 3% tax cap. But let's yeah. let's review that tax cap thing again. It's not just getting rid of your 3% tax cap. This is the bottom line, and this is where the rubber hits the road. Do you realize it's going to raise your property tax on the sale 100 to 200%? Yep, it's huge. These people, it'll slam them in the pocket. They don't realize what removing a 3% tax cap is, no. but they realize what a 100 to 200% increase yeah. is. So they need to know that so we very need good. to get it out. So what I understand is smaller, more effective government supports the people and better infrastructure. And run it like a business when you can. Yeah. Fiscal responsibility, it's a big issue. Yeah. So, hey, one last question. Mm-hmm. Roads and streets. I love Reno, and we can get around town so fast, yes. but I've seen so many people show up in all our infrastructure and our high density. Yes. In a, in a lot of apartments. Mm-hmm. What do we do about roads and streets? And in- well, I'll tell you. That's a city's job, remember? Police, planning, fire, planning, and public planning. works. And we used to have at the city of Reno, I know the figures inside and out, it used to have a $14 million a year budget for road repair and maintenance. You know what it is now, Bill? No. $2 million. Oh, that's, that's terrible. When a city does that, that catches up with you. Because well, our city roads aren't bad right now, but they could... Well, there's some bad ones. It just depends where you're going. There is roads that need repair and maintenance. Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing I'll be looking into, because I know the laws and what they do, and this stuff just slips by this council and my current uh, competitor all the time because she's busy with the developers and pandering to them and their her lobbyist friend, and they're just doing stuff right and left. But that's another story. So we'll get into the fact that per the NRS laws and when you voted for the increased gas tax, look at our gas tax and gas prices compared to everybody else's. Nationwide, people are upset because it, it's two something a gallon, and we're paying – Almost um, well, 350 and more a gallon right, right now because we pay so much into these taxes. So when that bill was approved, it said for road repair and maintenance for all these gas taxes, road repair and maintenance. Then later along the line, it got morphed into once again helping these special interest groups where now it went into the Northeast Connector, the Southeast Connector, $260 million mega projects instead of what it was voted for road repair and maintenance. So I'll be looking hard at that. And if they're breaking the law, we're going to change it back and put it back in road repair and maintenance, not yeah. giant mega projects yeah, and to- depleting totally, our funds. Totally for road agree that, you know, builders should pay their own way. Yes. And the roads and streets and infrastructure, you have to maintain them. You have to put emphasis on, you keep good roads. It's like a broken window. You keep your roads nice. The whole city is much better. Well, let's look at some of the things we've done for developers, which yes, development is needed. And the developers are our friend too. But by the same token, you can't pander to it because now, all of a sudden in the past, when people would do a development, they used to have to pay their upfront fees. Now, all of a sudden, between the mayor and her lobbyist friend, they've ended up now, you don't have to pay your fees up front. So what happens if they go bankrupt? Then we're stuck with a bill. So they should have to pay their fees up front. They did in the past. And they were supposed to in the past also get proper inspections on their roads. Sometimes that don't occur. They donate them back to the city and they're cracking after a few years. And then they'd have to build parks and fire stations and they let them go from all that. So here we are catering to them pretty much at our expense so that's wrong they should pay their way because they're going to make good money too and they'll create housing so everybody has to pay their fair share and not just put it on the citizens backs it's a balance good planning public safety eddie we could go on and on and we could after the primary we'll get you back on hopefully yes and uh we want to thank you for being a silver sponsor too which helps promote and develop these uh, shows for the rmc and meet the voter my pleasure, so and I appreciate your time, Bill. So we've got one last question, though. It's an mm-hmm. important question. Yeah. W- when I'm in the Reno, when people come here, where should they go eat? Where should they go eat? What's one place? One place. Well, I love Mario's Portofino's. It's a little Italian place over on Mill and Virginia Street. Wonderful place. But, too, you know, there's some good casinos to come, which is the Peppermill Atlanta. They also have good food. So, And also, how can the voter get a hold of you? We've got your website up right here. It's Eddie, eddielorton.com. eddielorton.com. Right. And it has my cell phone number on there, and I always answer my phone. So if you have any questions or concerns, I would love to hear from you, and then we could address the issues so we could be a better leader in the future. Yeah, very nice website. You're looking at it right now. And where is your cell phone? Do you know? It's a join. Uh, it should be maybe? on there. I'll look on the contact part. Contact, contact. I don't see. Oh, and, contribute, and, home. Anyway, anyway, it's a good looking website. Beautiful website. Yep. Nice picture of the city. You got a little video of you. Yep. Let's talk. We had a whole bunch and they took a bunch of them videos off, but 
We had a lot of them. I've been to yeah. a lot of city council meetings. So I'm not somebody that woke up one day and decided to run for mayor. This has been 30 years of work has come together. And unfortunately, I never really thought I would ever be in politics. But, you know, there's that one day when you look around and these people get elected that never did anything in their life and they're making decisions for us. Then you wake up that one morning and say enough is enough is enough. And so this is a way you can help 400,000 people. So I'm in it to win it. Very good. And you do have a lot of videos still. So thank you, Eddie. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming time lines and Thanks a for silver your time. sponsor. Yes, sir. You guys didn't get through to you. One second, by the way, silver sponsor is a great thing. Good yes. Thing. Yep. Thanks. Agreed. Thank you for getting me out there. I appreciate your time, bro. Ready. Take care. Thank you. Take one. That's just to help me. I love it. So, Eddie, we're going to talk about your life, sex. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't one. I'm in a campaign cycle. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead, and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail. Go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. And go over here, watch a couple more videos. Link to our website at republicanmenisclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.